Hi, hello, good morning. Welcome back. I'm Kaveri. I'm a third year medical student in BGS Global Institute of Medical Sciences, Bangalore. A lot of people who have come to this video now would be thinking biochemistry is a dead subject. It is so dry. Who wants to study biochemistry? What's the need of studying biochemistry? There are only cycles where we're going to apply these. I just feel like I'm still in POC studying chemistry by reading this biochemistry and what not. You will have a hell lot of questions. I'm not here to change your opinion about the subject in any regard. You can carry your opinion uh, forever. But just imagine if you flunk in biochemistry and if you're not able to go to your second year just because you did not like that subject and did not get the interest to read that subject. Or just imagine you flunk by just one or two marks. You would be really sad, right? So in this video, I'll be talking about a certain, uh, certain strategies and certain ways that you can apply for your studies in biochemistry, which will actually work wonders. I have got 80% in biochemistry. It does not mean that I like the subject. Biochemistry was a hell of a ride for me. But I just happened to find it easier or some of the techniques that I used to study the subject made it so easier that I could easily learn and just write in the paper and I just found it easier. So I thought I'll share these techniques with everyone because I f feel that these techniques are really very, very helpful. Let's just take it step by step. Firstly, if you don't like the subject, it will be very hard for you to just sit, open that book and start reading, right? Just listen to a motivational video or do some meditation, listen to a soothing music. Just calm yourself and try to read the subject. When your mind is calmer in such dry subjects like biochemistry, it is easier for you to grasp and continue reading for at least a little while. Even if all these techniques doesn't work for you, just do what I usually do. When I don't feel like studying at all, I just take the book and keep with me. Even though if I'm watching phone or I'm watching a video or anything, I just keep the book with me. So eventually after about half an hour, because the book is right in front of me and I haven't opened it, I will get that guilty conscious and just open the book and see what is there. And by the end, I end up studying some pages. I think you can follow this technique. So now, once you have opened the book, just try to see the chapter outline. Don't just straight away start reading everything. Let's just take baby steps. So now you just see the chapter outline and at the end of the chapter outline, usually a clinical correlation will be given. See the clinical correlation, take your phone, Google it, see some video related to the clinical correlation. So by seeing that video, you'll be at least little interested to find out what happens in that condition and then open your book and go read about that condition first. And this way, at least I'm not telling that you'll be able to read the entire chapter, but you will develop a little interest towards the concepts. And now, OK, you will be reading the disease and then you will want to know a little more about the disease. You go back and see other things in the chapter pertaining to the disease and stuff. This way you can develop interest to the subject gradually. One of the key points to remember and study biochemistry effectively is to know the word meanings. It comes very handy when you're trying to learn the different enzymes catabolizing each and every reactions. Now, if you don't know what the exact meaning of an enzyme is, you will just end up remembering the substrate and product and by hurting all the enzymes. And in the process, you will find the subject very hard and you will tend to mix up the enzymes and you will forget. So it is very easy for one person to, you know, mix up synthase, synthetase. They all sound so similar. So one of the key point is for you to understand what the name of the enzyme suggests. Let's take the example of two enzymes which break covalent bonds, lyase and hydroxylase. See, both of these enzymes will break covalent bonds. What is the difference? Hydroxylase breaks a covalent bond by adding a molecule of water, whereas lyase breaks it without adding a molecule of water. Now, if you know this basic point, it is easier for you to understand and add this. See, when you write a reaction, you need to add the coenzymes, you need to write H2O, ADP, etc. So when you know what the enzyme is actually doing, you can easily write it. Let's take one more example, synthase and synthetase. If you don't know what these are actually doing, it is harder for you. You just by heart and tend to confuse between these two. If you know that synthetase always catabolizes a reaction by adding ATP, it is even more easier for you. And one more example, like glucose is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. And the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is glu uh, you know, um, glucokinase. And now, if you don't know what the enzyme is actually doing, you just end up by hearting. What, see, the enzyme is glucokinase. And what does a kinase do? A kinase, most of the times, 
transfers a phosphate to the substrate. So here it is transferring phosphate to glucose and the glucose becomes glucose 6-phosphate. And also a kinase always catalyzes the reaction by using up a molecule of ATP. Now when you know all these, it is easier for you to remember and apply. So just if you see glucose converted to glucose 6-phosphate, you know phosphate is added. So a kinase should come and substrate is glucose. So it is glucokinase and whenever there is kinase, uh, ATP is required. So just put ATP to ADP plus phosphate. This, is, this way it is easier for you to remember each and every reaction. Just understand how each enzyme acts and it will make your work very, very, very simpler. See, biochemistry has a lot of you know flowcharts and one tends to forget it very easily and here is a way that you can easily uh, follow and remember things better and it is called as retrograde learning here after you go from a to z you come back from z to a and many studies have showed that this technique helps a person to remember things very easily and uh, they have done the study with so many students who are learning tables once they finish from 1 to 10, they come back from 10 to 1. That way they say that it is easier for the person to remember. And how do we apply this in biochemistry? Let's take the example of gluconeogenesis. Here the first substrate is glucose and then glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, DHAP, glyceraldehyde, so on, so on, so on and goes to phosphoenol pyruvate, oxaloacetate and pyruvate, right? So after you finish reading this uh, flowchart and after you have understood it, after you have understood how each enzyme in each step catalyzes the reaction, just come back from pyruvate to glucose. So you'll be like pyruvate, oxaloacetate, phosphoenol pyruvate, so on, so on, so on and to the substrate glucose. This way, when you uh, apply these way ways to all the other charts as well, it is very easier for you to remember and recall and write very effectively. The next way is to find yourself a study buddy. Now, I know biochemistry is a very dry subject and if you just continue reading by yourself all throughout and if you're really not interested in the subject, it tends to get very boring. So instead, if you have a study buddy, you can just split up the topics. You can study a topic, your friend can study a topic and after that you can explain to each other. So you have studied a topic, you explain it to a fr friend, it is like a revision to you. And there are places where you forget certain things or your friend asks questions and if you know it is, be it is very good, if you don't know, you just go, look back and thus your learning becomes very good. And your friend also explains a concept to you and you have not studied that topic. You listen to him and then go back and read it again and just glance through the pages. And because you all already have a voice memory inside your brain, it is very easier for you to learn that way. You can also explain it to yourself. Okay, there is a famous theory which says that when uh, you read a topic and explain to yourself in very simpler terms. Like, see, the, the topic can be as complex as anything. But when you explain it to yourself like a child, you just imagine yourself uh, as a child with zero knowledge about the topic. You have to do something to explain to the child in such a way that the child understands the complex thing that you have already studied or you know about. See, uh, when you make the things very simpler, it is easier for you to remember uh, for a longer time. And you can always bring in a very unconventional ways of studying. See, conventional ways of studying is of no help these days. You can use videos, you can use any other aids for you to study better. If you're using marrow or buddy or prep ladder for biochemistry, it is very good because they clear your concepts from the base. You study using those techniques and it is very effective and will help you on the longer run. Now coming to the ways that you can follow to remember biochemistry as I have already spoken in some of my other videos you can use techniques like active recall and spaced repetition these two techniques are, re are really very good and they can come handy in remembering subjects like biochemistry which are very very dry now spaced repetition is where you would just read a topic give some days of gap and then read it again so that your forgetting curve becomes a straight line and you don't forget things and active recall is after you read a subject, you just write down questions, a lot of questions on that topic. And next time you don't go to revise the topic, instead you take the list of questions and try to remember what you studied in that regard. It says that when you retrieve information from the brain, it is uh, easier for the brain and it remembers things for a longer time rather than you feeding it with information. Now I've spoken about both these methods in my video on how to read big books and how to remember effectively. I have left an i card somewhere here. You can just click on it and watch that part of the video. It starts at exactly 5 minutes 40 seconds. Don't waste your time. Watch just that part and come back. 
okay and you can also follow some many other methods like anki card or as i told you the famous uh, method etc for learning and remembering the subject you can apply these techniques for any subject for that matter and coming to one more important point see when you have exams you have some one month gap at study holidays right you just write all the charts on uh, all these flow charts on charts stick on your wall and just glance through it every day it is going to help you like anything see two of my friends stuck a lot of charts on their wall okay i just found it a little funny because we were in medical school and wait only in school days but i'll tell you i did not have any time to remember or recall charts the day before exam all that those charts that i've done in my paper just because of those charts that is stuck in their room and sticking charts in biochemistry especially so 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 important you might think that those charts are there in the book i'll open and read but take it from me you will never have the mood to open that book and see but once you have charts everywhere in your wall see as far as your eyes goes you can see only charts you will just want to at least see what is there in the chart and it is going to help you like anything now coming to how you have to write a biochemistry exam points flow charts images and making your uh, you know flow charts look very clear and neat these are the key and i know there are not more images in biochemistry but you can just draw line diagrams as to how you have understood the topic it is going to be such a life uh, saver draw a lot of flow charts wherever possible don't write anything in paragraph write in points no one is going to have time to read everything that you've written if it's in points you're going to read and if you feel that there is a important word in the point that you've written just underline it so when they see the underlined word they'll know that you know about it and that will make your work easier it will make your work easier and you'll fetch a lot of extra marks one more important thing for you when you're in an exam hall is to not take any stress now even though you have followed all these ways and you have worked a lot harder for biochemistry just because a subject is dry you'll always have that constant stress and anxiety running in your head uh, as to if you will finish the paper in time as to if you will even pass in the exam but i'll tell you whatever the situation you are in at that moment always make sure that you don't take stress see what happens when you take uh, stress is that the levels of cortisol in your body goes up and this cortisol acts on your hippocampus and blocks it and in that process you will not be able to remember things in the exam this is the exact reason behind why sometimes you go blank in the exam hall but after you come out of the exam hall you'll be able to remember it you'll explain to your friends and be like shit i knew the answer i did not write so always don't take stress in your exam hall if you have watched this video till now just give it a thumbs up uh, just share it with your friends who like content like this and keep supporting it would mean a lot to me and to all those who are in first year and are studying biochemistry all the best for your biochemistry exams just follow these tips and write your exam clear it go to the next year until next time bye bye